Hello, this is Rochelle Agatha, and this is the lecture for Chapter 2, Debits and Credits. This is a really important lecture, as all of them are, but the first few chapters of this um, accounting course are really important. So the first thing you need to um, keep in mind is that we're going to talk about setting up and organizing a chart of accounts, recording transactions in T-accounts, and T-accounts are an awesome tool. They really are in learning debits and credits. Preparing a trial balance and preparing financial statements from a trial balance. So the first learning objective is setting up and organizing a chart of accounts. Think of your chart of accounts like your index. Um, it's where your business transactions are recorded and the different account types are assets, liabilities, equity, expense, and revenues. Um, why this is needed is it's a way to record increases and decreases in specific account categories and keeping them all together in one place. So um, keep in mind accounting is a language so it's like learning any language you need a way to um, to speak it and this is the way that we speak accounting. A standard account is a formal account that includes columns for specific information as noted here. Accounts have a separate form and each form contains um, transactions affecting it. So the way you're learning accounting is like in the olden days when we used paper. A lot of bookkeepers learn accounting through QuickBooks or Quicken and they don't really understand accounting. You have to learn accounting on paper the old-fashioned way for it to make sense. Otherwise all you are is a data entry person and you don't really understand accounting. Here is your account page. So it's kept called a ledger and it's book-like. So the date, the item, the post reference, the debit, the date, the item, post reference, credit. So it's, it's the account number and the account title and it's all set up in a very linear fashion. The account title, notice there's a left side and a right side which is going to become important for the T account. The T account is basically the account title with a big T and a left and a right side. Um, all T accounts have this structure. The left is the debit, the right is the credit, no matter what the normal balance of an account is. Debits and credits indicate position only. The procedure used to balance an account is the same for all accounts, no matter if it's asset liability, equity, expense, or revenue. Notice that you have your numbers, you have your dates, you have your amounts, and you have a balance with a double underscore. This is called a subtotal, and it's also called foot. So you foot an account, and then here is a total, or a balance total. These are footings. The learning objective, too, is recording transactions in T-accounts. T-accounts make it very simple to do accounting, and I have to tell you, I've been doing accounting for 20 plus years, and when I get stuck and I can't figure out a transaction, I pull out my T-account and I do it in a T-account. It's just the way accountants think. You need to remember this is a great thing to put on a flashcard or several flashcards, the normal balance of an account. And when we're done here, I'm going to review the fact that I have a normal balance lecture on my website that you can take advantage of. So you need to remember that assets have a normal debit balance and a debit will increase it and a credit will decrease it. Liabilities have a normal credit balance which means an increase is a credit and a decrease is a debit. Keep in mind the reason you need to know this is your accounting equation always stays in balance. Therefore your owner's equity in total has a normal credit balance whereas the pieces within have different balances. Revenue is a credit, expense is a debit, and a withdrawal is a debit. Here are the rules. This is a great thing to put on a flashcard also, and I, you'll see this in my lecture on my website. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Here's all the pieces of the big T account. Notice that the debit and the credit is on the same in each T account, but what the debit and credit do to each other is different. So in a debit account, the debit's a plus. In a credit account, the debit is a minus. So if you worked in banking, throw that, all that knowledge out of your head because people who work in banking tend to get mixed up because they think of the credit as the opposite way. Um, when you balance your equation, these are just the rules that we just talked about, you need to make sure that your accounting equation in balance is always in balance. So after every debit there must be at least one credit and your T accounts must balance. 
So here's a chart of accounts that you'll see for this business, Mia Wong, attorney at law. Some assets, liabilities, owner's equity, and here's our income statement accounts. There's five steps to analyzing a transaction. First, you're going to determine which accounts are affected. So you're going to sit back and think this in your head. What accounts are affected? Determine which categories the accounts belong to, the asset, the liability, capital, etc. Determine whether the account increase or decrease is a, in, whether the transaction is increasing or decreasing an account. And then say, what do the rules of debit and credit say in this transaction? And what does a T account look like? The five step analysis process gives you another perspective when you look at it this way. And this is just a slide that you might want to put on a flashcard. Here's some transactions. So on this day, on the 28th, Mia Wong invests $6,000 in cash. So here's your T account, $6,000 in cash, $200 in office equipment, for a total of $6,200 of investment in capital. Notice it's easy to do the T accounts in a small working space because that you can just draw them. In this first transaction, cash is an asset. It was debited, so that's an increase. Office equipment is an asset. It was debited, so it's an increase because these two have a normal debit balance. Mia Wong Capital has a normal credit balance, so it was credited and it was also an increase. Your entire accounting equation increased in this transaction. Notice that some transactions will have more than one debit or credit, and that is double entry bookkeeping or double entry accounting. Here's another transaction on August 29th that bought um, $500 of equipment for cash. So here you're going to add to your equipment and you're going to decrease your cash. This time an asset went down and an asset went up, so the net of those assets is zero. So everything happened on one side of the accounting equation. In this transaction, you bought equipment on debt. So this happened on both sides of the accounting equation. A debit went up and a credit went up because accounts payable is a normal credit balance. On the 30th, you provided legal services. So your revenue went up, so that is a credit, and your cash went up, so that is a debit. And then you pr um, provided legal services on account. This is where the client didn't pay you yet, so your account receivable went up and your revenue went up. Once again, on both sides of the accounting equation. So you're in balance. Now you receive $900 off that receivable, so your receivables went down and your cash went up. This happened on one side of the accounting equation, just the assets. Now you paid salaries of $700. Cash went down, salary expense went up. This is an asset, this is an expense. Equity is going down because you incurred an expense. However, expense is, an, is a debit account, so the expense itself went up. Now you paid rent for $400, so you have your cash going down again and rent expense going up, so your expense went up. However, the effect of an expense is a decrease in, in equity. And then you received an advertising bill for $200. I'm going to flip through these a little bit quicker here. And then you withdrew cash for personal use, so there's your cash going down, and your withdrawal is a debit balance, so it increased, the withdrawal account increased, but you know that that brings equity down. Here's the big picture, and this is a really good way to look at it. Here's all of your assets, accounts receivable, and equipment on the left side of the equal sign. These are your assets. Your liabilities were accounts payable, and here's all your owner's equity accounts. Notice capital is a normal credit balance. Withdrawals is a normal debit balance. Revenue is a normal credit balance. Expenses are a normal debit balance. All of this must equal liabilities plus equity must equal assets. Then you prepare a trial balance. Your trial balance is a list of any balances to make sure you're in balance. Because as an accountant, you don't want to start creating pretty financial statements if your trial balance doesn't balance. So let's talk about some things here. A trial balance has footings, um, and you need to know the balance of each account. So it's important to get your subtotals and your, your account balance total before you create your, your trial balance. And here's your trial balance. Your debits and your credits equal 11700 
Notice that it's not a formal statement, so you don't need the dollar signs or anything. It's just making sure that all of your accounts are in balance before you move on. Then you can prepare your financial statements. When the trial balance is complete, first you do the income statement because you need the net income to do the owner's equity statement. Then you do the owner's equity statement and then you do the balance sheet. They have to go in that order or you can't complete them. And let's walk through it. Here's your trial balance. Notice the assets go, let's start with the income statement. All of the revenue and expense go on the income statement up at the top. So here's your legal fees and all your expenses, getting you net income. Net income rolls to your owner's equity statement, beginning capital, plus or minus net income or loss, less withdrawals, is an increase or decrease in capital, is your ending capital or your ending um, owner's equity. That goes on your balance sheet and notice your balance sheet is in total. Note that the total of the trial balance does not equal the total of any other report because the trial balance is all of your accounts. Um, the chart of accounts is just, it's a quick um, summary and, and remember that the rules of debit and credit are really important. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you read these summaries but I really wanna show you something on my website. Um, let's click on over to my website real quick. Please note when you go on my website on the Accounting 101 page, there's these two lectures called Normal Balance and Accounting Equation. It, um, there's also these other lectures that will give you a little bit more insight, but really the, if you need more help on the Accounting Equation or Normal Balance, um, go there and you're more than free to look around. If you have any questions, please um, send me an email. Thank you.